you are about to receive messages that may be harmful to your mental state. Your sense of reality. You are about to receive messages that may be harmful to your mental state. Your sense of reality will be questioned. Your view on things will be altered. You are now part of the meta. The meta controls everything. The meta determines what will and will not happen. You are watching the meta show. Live. Yes, and we have uh, audio, and it's all not broken. Woo! I did it! All not broken. Welcome! Well, assuming that people can even hear me, I have to apologize in advance that I am wearing a black shirt. Why well, I actually do wear lots of black shirts when I'm <laughs> not on television, but I was uh, giving a fireside chat to, I think we broke 940 people, uh, with uh, a lot of the crew who are here today. Uh, we weren't planning on bringing... Uh, Aerith and a nominate on board. We had both had lined up uh, Jay Amazingness and Lux Libertas and Zolfi for the uh, international segment. Uh, but then CCP Quant decided to pour <laughs> uh, napalm on a fire that had already poured, had gasoline poured on it uh, yesterday uh, by dropping this announcement about fighter nerfs on top of the Rorqual nerfs. And uh, the EVE community has gone ballistic uh, to the point of people shooting the monument in Karna Riot style. Uh, and there's just a tremendous amount of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, uh, which means that yes. I literally just finished the fireside and then threw my green screen up behind me and I haven't changed my shirt. So you get a black shirt today to go along with... Uh, really just you know, it's, ridiculous it's kind nonsense. of funny because I, I thought we were both in mourning because we're both wearing black shirts rather than red shirts like normal so we're just in mourning for the death of ccp games <laughs> well <laughs> hopefully hopefully it won't get to that point so the yeah. top story yeah so just to go through what we're going to be talking about here uh now we had a massive uh fight uh you know it's been a big day in eve despite all of the ccp uh there was a big fight between the imperium and tesco uh, which resulted in uh, Tesco and particularly CO2 just getting the absolute ever-living crap stomped out of them, trying to take out a Space Violence Fortizar, uh, which is good. That's what they get. Uh, we also had leaks of logs between Gigex, yeah. uh, number one best diplomat in EVE Online, uh, throwing a tantrum at his allies in Tesco. Yeah, it was, was a uh, coordination channel. It's so good. It was, the reading was exactly. hilarious. And then uh, we have, uh, you know, there was a dead Alliance tournament ship. There was a vendetta uh, got blown up. Like, there's lots of fancy things blowing up. Yeah, but we're going to talk about is, a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> we're, we're, you know, we're going to get into that. But, I mean, really, the, the big thing, the top story is going to be talking about all of uh, the nonsense that CCB has done and getting perspectives from our CSM representatives. You so, mean the dartboard that we're going to be throwing the uh, darts at? <laughs> exactly. So before, before we before we get into that, let's give some shout outs here to everybody uh, so we can uh, appreciate our subscribers. Uh, and yep. I think we have a, so we've got a nominate for 23 months in a row, Zafo for eight months with Twitch Prime. Thanks yep. for Darth Bucks. Kill. Darth uh... Kill. Got it right before the change comes. Seven months in a row. Uh, and I think there were some others higher in There was back one right list. before the show started, like right before the show started and I missed it. Gibberish Vishavs for just subs and get some black eagles in chat. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, uh, so, Red uh, Chief 000, six months. Excellent. Uh, so, should we roll the. Let's yeah, roll let's, the top go, story. Let's go let's to the top story because this is going to be a whole We've got a lot to go over. So, I'm actually going to play a, a slight bit of devil's advocate here. Like, just a, just a tad bit. Because I think CCP has a plan that they just don't know about yet. And I see them pushing the game away from where it is now and towards where it used to be way back in ancient times. So in ancient times... You see a plan. That does the, a plan. I don't think CCP knows they're, they're, they're doing exactly what we want them to do. Okay. There we go. That's the better way to put it. Okay. You look at what, where they're going in the last month or so. T3 cruisers are getting outright nerfed or changed completely. Like, their role is just getting hit with a bat. Okay. So they're going to either get knocked out or changed. That's one of the 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 current meta ships right they're gone 
Carriers and super carriers just lost 30% of their output damage. So they're now getting whacked. And they're whacking pirate battleships, which I want to ask Gareth how much he thinks this is going to change this. But they're dropping less and the material costs going up. So they're going to double in cost. Let, 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 let's back up here for a second here. Yeah, yeah, because go ahead. One, of, one of the challenges that we have, because this blew up on Friday. I mean, I, yep, yep. Uh, I woke up late on Friday and I checked the internet and there had already been like five hours of torches and pitchforks. So for people who are not aware that there is a screaming... <laughs> crisis and what's interesting about this also is the timing because of course all the games journalists are in hyper uh, aware mode because e3 is happening oh, yeah, e3 is heading to e3. Yep. so yep. as far as the timing of uh pissing off your player base goes uh, it, it really just it couldn't be worse timing uh can Aerith, can you give us uh an overview of what has actually happened before we go into the analysis of what happened and why so for the last two weeks or so, CCP has made a series of decisions and mistakes that have kind of culminated in this rage and this rioting you're seeing in GDA now, right? It started with the API breaking and then like, fuck you, we're not going to fix it. Okay, that's a weird decision, um, but okay, let's move on. And then it was nerf, 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 right? You had the Oracle nerf announcement. You had ghost training everyone was up in arms about that they weren't nerfing and then they tried to stealth nerf, screwed that up and shut everyone's school cues off, which to their credit, they did respond well with that. Um, then you had now the fighter and capital, super capital nerf. Uh, so it, within a two week period, you've effectively kicked every major high level player in the balls. These are the players that, uh, they are the most vocal, but they're also the players that are the most likely to bring in new, new revenue, right? So it, it isn't even necessarily the decisions that CCP's made, it's the way in which they did it. And they did not consult with the CSM on these decisions. They, they tried to bury the lead. They tried to drop some of these in a channel that basically no one was in or, or few of us were in. There was no feedback mechanism. So they, they slipped this in at last minute, like is fate to accompli, you know, right? It was already a decision that was made. They weren't really looking for input from the CSM. They're just going to blast out the player base. And we're all like, okay, you can do that, but you know, this is not going to go well. I personally had messaged Andy two weeks ago saying, this is a drama buildup. There's going to be drama crickets she didn't respond and uh, here we Andy, are Andy. with players writing for, for andy being andy sorry ccp being... seagull okay right. cool, cool. so you you warned ccp that you had noticed uh a risk of an explosion of drama that the the natives were restless essentially yeah the natives were already restless from the first couple things when i originally messaged her but then they just started dropping napalm with nerf after nerf after nerf yeah, yeah. bad decision after bad decision and here we are well, so, what do you think out of all of these decisions? And I'm actually going to uh, to point this over to a nominate now, who is another CSM representative from Goonswarm. So there have been a number of nerfs. Uh, and as far as I can see, there's like three separate issues here. There is uh, the nerfs to fighters, there's the nerfs to work walls, uh, and then there's the communication from CCP themselves, right? And, and in, in many ways, uh, I almost think like the communication or the lack of communication with uh, the CSM uh, is almost its own issue. So let's examine, uh, and nominate, can you break down for us what you think on the merits of the changes themselves, irrespective of everything else? How do you, how do you think this stacks up and what's your analysis of it? Um, I think they're, they're short-sighted, you know, they're looking at um, you know, some surface graphs and they're seeing the graph going too high too quickly and they want to, um, you know, flatten the graph out. They're not really considering anything deeper than that. Um, I think they're pretty much looking at the monthly economic report and panicking. And they're thinking Why would they, they panic? Something... Well, the, uh, <laughs> they, uh, when they first did the big work hole buff, um, it was actually, for several months, the monthly economic report was wrong. It basically did not include the work wool mining. Hmm. Um, then they fixed it, and holy shit, everyone saw just how much was actually being mined. And so there were a bunch of nerfs, and we have the new monthly economic report. And sh even with the nerfs, there's even more mining. Yeah, and when you say even more mining, so. what we're saying here is in particular, uh, that's to clarify, that's in, in Delve specifically, because as far as, far as I could tell, uh, the April Rorqual nerfs uh, were reflected in a reduction of economic activity across every place else in the galaxy with the singular exception of Delve. Is that correct? Right. right. But all of these changes are just 
targeting. They're looking. They're looking at Dell. They're not looking at anywhere else. So this might might sound hilarious. Chat says CCP currently has a job posting for a senior communications manager. So it kind of would explain the problems they're having now because it seems like they look at it, they realize there's a nerf, and then go, "Oh shit, let's get this out there quickly." And instead of doing it all at once so that players can look at it all at once, they're giving players to look at a specific thing and pick it apart for a week. And then they break another thing, and then they get yelled at for that for a week. So it gives players time to cool down from one to the next before they start screaming again, rather than let them get all their screaming at once, and then CCP can fix it. And I think well, I, I had counseled them very strongly. We had a meeting around this crisis yesterday, and I counseled them strongly that you need to boil the crabs slowly. You don't drop crabs into boiling water. You can't hit players with this many nerfs in this short period of time with no communication, then be like, peace out, fuck you guys, we're going on vacation. Because that's what's happening. <laughs> And that's the wrong way to handle this. What, what right. is stunning to me is that we have historically seen uh, through so many CSMs, uh, so many administrations, that periodically, and, and if I have to name names here, I would say that uh, the CCB FOSI uh, focus groups are one of the worst examples of this, of where there is a CSM for precisely this reason. And in almost every scenario where CCB has stepped in it and the players are rioting, lo and behold, it turns out that they did an in run around or never even informed and never discussed with the player elected focus group that is the CSM. So here we have a scenario, CCP has done this. One of the first things that happened is people were like, where is the CSM? We're angry. And the CSM says, well, they didn't talk to us about this because we would have said, why are you communicating in this way? This is a dumb idea. If you have to message it, message it in another way. Uh, it, it is the same mistake that we have seen in the past. Uh, chat does, does bring up that they're looking for senior communication manager. Um, all you really have to do, you can implement nerfs in games. I mean, we have had to cut back on reimbursement in the Imperium, which is tens of thousands of people. Uh, in the past, we have had to do belt tightening. We've had to make unpleasant policy changes. Right. Uh, we get everybody together. We have a fireside chat. We let people know changes coming in advance. We let them know what the possibilities are. We ask for advice for people. We answer the questions. And then when the change happens, it's not a surprise. Friday evening, oh, hey, guys, this is going in on Tuesday and your carrier fighters are simply not going to work. And then something we haven't mentioned yet on uh, on the, the show is what really pulled, poured all the napalm onto the fire. Oh, yeah, the 1% the, of 1%. The CCB quant uh, <laughs> coming on and basically telling the RE people that they were the only people who were upset about this were the top 1% of 1%. And um, that, no, hold on, it gets better. The top 1% of 1% and that it's only RMT's fault that the economy is breaking, not the fact that we're incompetent. That's another quote that gets pulled out. So I'll link the Reddit thread because this is golden. It pulls right to his post in case it gets deleted because you can't link to his post. It might be deleted. Who knows? I want to uh, yeah, I want to bring here. Jay and Lux in on this because Jay and Lux were our capital FCs within the Imperium, and you know the particular nerf here uh, involving fighters is something that uh, says it's aimed at PVE, but may very well have a PVP impact. So Lux and Jay, if you guys can give us your your views uh, about this specific carrier nerf and how it's going to impact uh, the ships of the line. They've, it, is, they've, go ahead. it is pretty disappointing to see them basically blaming all of this on, uh, on, on Moons being too good at PvE and, as you say, in turn, producing a pretty substantial nerf to uh, carriers, especially uh, in, in PvP. When you take a Thanatos now, and it will now do a bit less damage than a Rattlesnake, which is uh, quite a thing. So what are carriers good for now? Giant bricks, right? They'll, they'll still be good at, at putting damage across the field. Um, mobile damage, like Rattlesnake um, can't project the damage out that far. Um, their tank isn't that good. Um, and you don't have no uh, support drones like you do with Carrier. Um, the thing that most people are annoyed about with this change is how they've marketed it towards players. They've, they've said, because of PvE, we're going to nerf um, uh, the, the PvP aspects of, of the fighters. Which, fighters needed enough, because they were pretty overpowered, especially in large groups. Uh, but they're not, not in this way, I don't think. So I have a question for you two, real quick, and I thought about this the second they announced it. Why, if you want to nerf carrier, super carrier, big giant things output of damage to rats, why not drop the SIG of the rats? Because medium drones like Gila's, 
Vexor Navy issues. Those things are still going to hit rats that are smaller SIGs. And then fighter bombers, like the T2 fighter snipers, might not hit them as well. You know, they're not going to track these things as well. Because it seems to come down to is just tracking. Rather than just taking the DPS out, which affects PvP also, you know, could they have just done that? Um, yeah, it's a very lazy way how they've, how they've nerfed uh, fighters for PvE. They've essentially uh, just lowered the damage output instead of changing anything to do with the rats or the Anon respawn times, anything like that. They've just gone ahead and uh, they've actually changed the the ratio in which uh, rats will attack um, attack fighters. So that's that that was a good thing, but uh, I don't think they should have changed the damage output that much. They definitely needed a change, maybe fifteen percent to start with, right. but uh, not not like not thirty percent. Yeah, I because I, I look at it like from like a multiple thing. Like they could have done like three or four different things if they sat down and thought about it and really looked at the way ratting works. Because a lot of the complaints you see people in the threads uh, going, it's not just carrier super carriers. Look at a VNI a guy could just take ten VNIs, which cost pennies, forty million isk, and make just as much as he would in the super carrier for no risk. I mean, yeah, sure, you could die to a couple of bombers, you just go get a new one. You can AFK wrap those things. So I, I see. I see CP CCPs trying to look at an overall like large number problem. They're looking at the big numbers because you got to realize this too. This isn't just. Uh, I don't think they're just preparing for what is happening now. They're pre also preparing for what's coming in a, you know six months time. Moon changes because look like look, look at the Oracle change. Right, I thought about this last night. Look at Oracles, and you guys can comment on this because you use them. Right, is that you change Oracles now because in six months, like if you put moons. In the equation of oracle mining, Delf has thousands of these. So you're well, not just going to be sitting in the noms, right? You're going to go to boots. If they're planning on doing something, looking ahead to six months in the future, uh, I would like to believe that. I don't think that that's the case because if they actually had forward planning here, uh, they would be able to manage the communications. In right. the past, CCP has demonstrated an ability to talk to the CSM like goddamn adults, because that's what the CSM is for, and yeah. they don't, bad things happen. Uh, if they had a plan that was a six-month plan, they could have presented it to the CSM, gotten feedback, and then messaged this to the player base over a period of weeks such that it wasn't a surprise, as opposed to, right. oh, hey, guys, it's Friday, uh, we're doing this Tuesday. I mean, that's not exactly I what that, I would see as the, an indication of long-term planning. That's the thing here. I think the communication just broke down. They said, okay, Fozzy, go fix this, without bothering to do the, the whole communication oh, it, it was It was Larrikin. It was Larrikin. It was Larrikin. Oh, Larrikin. Okay, but either way, like, Fozzy and Larrikin, Fozzy also commented on some stuff recently. But, like, the pirate battleship changes, the the those are coming soon. And that's going to, uh, someone said the quote was, double the price of the Mac. So you're not going to see max used in hundreds because an 800 million s max just in holes that's a hunt it's 80 billion a loss if you lose 100 of these things right that's not even including the fits that's going to get hella expensive okay you, you'll go back to seeing low sec only right max i think what you're going to see i think what you're going to see and the ccp might be pushing this way and without even intentionally meaning it tech one battleships maelstroms abaddon's uh, those are going to be your ships of the line again because you're looking at a situation where t3 cruisers might be done and out you can't use pirate battleships. That's your next bet, right? Max are done and out. They're too expensive. They're going to be used in low sec. They're going to be using wormholes, maybe. And you're not going to see carriers because carrier damage is getting slaughtered. So you're not going to see carrier damage because they're going to do the same damage as your Abaddon's are going to do for 10 times the price, right? Abaddon's are 230 mil. Um, carriers are more than that. But now you're seeing with the moon changes coming and the economy is going to get hit even harder with that. And the mining changes. Now you're seeing Tech One battleships go up in price. So you're seeing a lot more. Hold I on think, a second. Got to interrupt. Yep, yep, yep. Congratulations, boys and girls. Our eighth keep star has online <laughs> in Delve. That's what uh, you see live on stream, boys. Live on stream. Our eighth keep star has officially <clears throat> online. High five, and, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Hail Satan. High fives all around. But uh, well, yeah. So. It looks I, like I just, that way, whenever, you know? I, whenever, I, whenever I see this kind of thing, and this is something we were talking about on the fireside, uh, somebody was asking here in chat, uh, Caleb was asking to talk about the relative power nerf uh, for Goonstorm versus everybody else. Um, and one of the things that is unusual about this is it does seem like a very short-sighted lack of planning. Uh, I said on the fireside, and apparently CCP's official Twitch channel uh, is watching the meta show right now, so hello, guys. Uh, so one of the things that we've seen here is they clearly don't understand what it is that 
is the engine of economic activity for the Imperium as a whole. We were talking about this on the fireside, how there's so many layers of things that we do that results in economic production. Uh, it is not a simple matter of hey guys, if we slow down excavator drones, then there will be less mining. Uh, that is the case for more simplified economies, uh, which you see in every place else in NullSec. So what you <laughs> saw in the April monthly economic report, which was before they implemented the Rorqual drone nerf, and then May uh, was economic activity increasing in Delve because the uh, excavator drones is not the single thing that is making things work in Delve. So whenever power is always, and this is a key thing, in war, in economy, in every aspect of any competitive game with multiple variables, power is ultimately relative. When Eve first opened, the first guy to, got a, to get a battleship when everybody was in frigates was a god. Now we have more titans than we have than there were battleships back in the day in Eve. Uh, but the relative power has changed. So whenever CCP implements a nerf that is intended, uh, whether they admit it or not, when they they stutter on talker talking in stations and insist that this has nothing to do uh, with the Imperium, uh, whenever there is a nerf to uh, the game as a whole and there's a differential impact that results in a net buff because the gap in relative power between us and uh, everybody else just increases. I like, uh, it's I like just the, ridiculous. I think of it like like uh, think of it like a like the U.S. economy. You have like we're the company Apple. We build ten different things rather than one thing. So the U.S. Are you tax... saying I need to get a turtleneck? No, what I'm, no, what I'm saying is like Jobs. imagine like if the U.S. tax system, the U.S. government goes, okay, we need to tax cell phones at twenty percent more. The company that's just making cell phones, they just got fucked, right? Or thirty percent in the case of the fighters. Uh, whereas our, uh, I could say, company is the best way to put it with guys like Aerith and Weaslor and and Querns. It's just like okay, here's the thing you're gonna do to make money. Go make money. Don't worry about this nerf. It's not going to affect you, right? Like, it doesn't affect such a huge company as much as it does these little guys. Like, we have a very diversified Horde. economic yes, portfolio. Yes, right. I, I see. I see guys like Horde going, "Oh fuck, we're just getting carriers. Now they're getting whacked with a bat. We're just getting workholes. Now they're getting whacked with a bat." Like, I don't see the economy for those guys functioning as high powered as it does with goods. So it's going to hit them even harder than it does goods. What do you think, Eric? Well, I mean, the economic report tells the story. Look at our mining output from April to May. We went up over 20%. We went to 9 trillion esque. Like, no one can compete with the organization, the logistics we have in place. Affords are in almost every single system. I mean, think about that from a capital writing perspective for a second. Our guys don't even need to jump home at night. They just dock. Um, you know, how many regions have affords are in every in every system? Or a beacon in every system, which is right. Like, like there's, yeah. yeah, there's so many things that CCP doesn't account for, and the sad part is, they've never even asked me. Like I designed the entire Delve plan, like, and they've never asked. And I don't know if that's pride. I don't know if that's hubris. Like I don't know what that is, but they've never even sought our guidance on. Well, what would you do if you wanted to actually nerf this output? <laughs> we would tell them. But they've never asked. and I That's think the fucked up thing. That's what we've right, got to see. Right, a right. Like, all they would have to do is say, hey, Aerith, you lead the finance team. Well, you don't lead, but you are one of the like three finance team directors because we don't have a finance lead, blah, blah, blah. But you're one of the biggest economic experts in the history of EVE Online, and you are one of the architects of what has been created here in Delve, and you are under NDA, and yeah. you are on the CSM. Hey, Aerith, could you please explain to me what you're doing? Because you explain right. this stuff on fireside chats, well, it gets for even God's better. sake. Well, it gets even better. He's done it before in tweets, where he says, look, this is what we're doing. Here's how you fix it. And then CCP still don't fix the motherfucker. Instead, they ban people arbitrarily and just say, okay, we, we fucked up. Without any they fucked up. Like, we're well, going to get a lot of more than that like we told them that work rules were stupid fine they acknowledged that they would be they wanted that direction okay well fine you, you've thought about it you've rationalized it if you're okay with it great we told them we were going to spam citadels you know i remember larrikin being extremely dismissive of that well we got to think about the little guy yeah we got to think about the little guy um and we're like okay but you got to understand <laughs> that protecting that little guy means we spam the shit out of them we're in, we're insurmountable and that's exactly what's occurred yeah I, you know here here's the thing i like to look at from this debacle that is 
uh, CCP making mistakes while they're on vacation. This alpha clone change that they came through, I, I almost feel like they didn't tell you guys before they ran the script. Uh, according to what we're being told by CCP is they ran a script that was designed to stop alpha clones from training. Uh, for everyone that wasn't here last week, alpha clones could become subbed, become omegas, train uh, 365 days of skills, so one year of skills, then turn off your one month subscription and train for the next seven months now it's been almost, uh, six months since December, for free. So you're talking about all those skill goos you just turned into billions. One guy quoted himself at making 800 billion isk in the time that alpha training has been allowed for no cost, practically. Uh, and then CCP goes, okay, we ran this script. Problem is, when they ran this script, it nuked randomly. Half of my subbed accounts went down. One guy reported none of his alphas went down, but all five of his subs went down. Like, it's it just insane how they looked at it, and then they had no comment for a couple of days. And then E starts crashing, and no comment. And then all of a sudden, they're like, oh yeah, we kind of ran this script, and we fucked up a bit. Uh, yeah, ghost training, not alpha training. Sorry, ghost training. It's like, holy fuck. Like, how do you but, fuck something this up? This bad. But, but, but to their credit, Falcon did handle that appropriately. He no, got I like out his communication. Post, yeah. They got out the remediation and they got out the, the reimbursement. So they actually handled that well once they became aware of it. So I would encourage CCP, handle this that way. Get out in front of it. Um, and that's the problem. That's why they have riots right now. That's why they have Reddit full of threads. Like you are not communicating effectively. And when you do, you have a quant coming out there and just throwing gas on the fire. I mean, the reality is that from things that we have seen and we've displayed on the meta show from some of our CC Capital training ops, uh, so not just things that only the Imperium have seen, uh, that carriers, carrier fighters en masse are incredibly powerful to the point that we were zapping NCDOT's Titans on CC just by having, hey, here's a million just regular fighters and they're just yeah. deleting Titans. So the challenge here is that the actual changes to carrier fighters might be be reasonable but who knows because the communication strategy and the lack of respect to the csm the lack of respect to the player base obscures the merits or the lack thereof for this care this fighter nerf. i think too is it, it i think in the last year and maybe you, you guys can correct me wrong i'm a little tinfoil hatter here in the last year or so since the start of the casino or since uh, manifest's big push and i say manifest because he was the guy that did this to push away from goons towards reddit right he 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 did dislike goons yes he world like, war b right right right. he didn't like goons so he stopped talking to us ccp stopped worshiping talking to us. at the altar of our eve right right so you, you got to this Car. point where it's like everyone listens to reddit and ccp and now now they're at a point now where ccp's fucked up so hard by not listening to people who know what the fuck they're talking about that reddit's even hating them i mean it's been constant this entire week since the end of the meta show last week till today just constant threads to the point where one mod had to combine some 30 threads and delete every one of the, the comments because it was just that bad. He had to make a mega thread. It was just getting out of control. The hate just vehemently hating CCP. And it was like, wow, holy shit. Like, live by the upvote, die by right. the upvote. And, and it, I mean, even this, uh, I, I like to think of this alpha clone as the blunder. <laughs> World and, War CCP, Cindy Sins, as in text. Okay, so War someone here says, correct, correct me, it says 80 <laughs> threads were created this week. A fuck CCP, 80 different ones, which is unheard of on Reddit for hate on CCP. So that's huge. Uh, but yeah, it's just been crazy. It's been a mess. I mean, I like the way they're going. Because I'm disappointed. Reddit is all up in arms and nobody's coming at us. I mean, what is this? <laughs> oh, the, the, the bad, that we'll get to that in the, the next segment here. We'll, we'll, we have a little bit on that, so. Uh, oh, we so might did it actually come at us, and we haven't seen it. Yeah, we, mean... we we might have to skip the uh, Imperium Brings of the World for just a moment because he's uh, doing the Alliance turn after getting this Keepstar online, so. Uh, we might have to miss that. Well, if if, if Zolfi has to go uh, do the Alliance Sermon stuff after onlining a Keepstar, then uh, God <laughs> bless. I mean, that's, a, that's a pretty good day. But yeah, so I, I mean, I see see this is crazy. Like today today was supposed to be, I wanted to talk about T3 Cruisers and how the this one chat's going and maybe get Asher and a couple other guys. But then yesterday happened. And it's like, ha, lol. They just give us the news. We don't even have to look for it. It's great. 
Uh, but well, let's, uh, let's... I actually want to. I want to ask Jay a question yep. here because one of the things that Jay Amazingness does that people might not be aware of, in addition to live streaming fights, which is awesome, he was live streaming the conflict earlier today, uh, is he is heavily involved in the production of super capitals. And I was wondering, Jay, if you could give us an idea of have any of these changes to Rourke Walls or the uh, economy impacted uh, super capital production that you've seen. Uh, when Rock Wars first came out, and they were very, very overpowered, or got very cheap, uh, bought up a bit of ore during that time, and super caps became very cheap to build. I'm talking uh, nine point nine bill for a for a super carrier, and thirty seven to forty five for a Titan, depending on who you buy it from. Uh, but recently, war prices have started going up again, so it's it's now about uh, in the fifties now for building Titans. And Stealth CFX profits that I make. So, but I haven't had a problem sourcing ore. Um, there's always been a constant flow of ore from a number of different people that that multibox rock walls. Someone told me this week, Jay, and you can confirm this because you build supers, maybe even you bucks. They pay 27 billion for their avatar hull. Is that true? Like, did they really uh, spend that little just to yeah. to get it? Like, holy so, balls! There's a guy called Janelle who spent like. 29 to 30 30 ish bill uh just by putting up buy orders and delve and having people sell or to him. <laughs> holy shit that's that's a third or no that's three and a half times less than you can buy it from the manila keep star in low sec just to get it killed by low sec pirates that day but, uh, it was a little while ago uh, price yeah yeah, 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 yeah this, this is about a month ago i think he said uh one of the couldn't we couldn't we build his for under nine bill he's uh aeon that's ridiculous. I mean, one of the amazing. consequences of this, like, you know, this is, uh, I've seen this so many times now that it's it's just disappointing. It does, it's not really enraging because I've been stuck in this for too long, I guess. Uh, the reason why everybody is digging in and engaging in PVE is ultimately the disease, the symptom of overproduction and ore prices being so low is not something that is uh, the source of this rot. The source of the rot is Fozisov. And again, we saw a similar pattern from what we have heard. Uh, the implementation of Fozisov was done with essentially no consultation with the CSM right. whatsoever. It was a classic table flip. Hey guys, we're doing this terrible soft system that nobody wants, that doesn't generate kill mails, that goes against the very core of the culture of EVE Online. And so now what we're seeing here is EVE has been in a cold war and it's you know not even really all that much of a cold war uh the when catch fell to tesco and stain wagon retreated there was a negotiated exit involving all of the parties ms painting on a map of dotland <laughs> to decide this. who would get what instead of the winners taking the space everybody was basically like okay uh you're gonna win this and also we just don't want to play Fozisov so and including the attackers who play Fozisov. so let's just all let's all have a conference like a fucking you know Yalta conference, let's sit down and, you know, figure out how all this works and decide what the map would be. So the, the consequence of production, ex <laughs> yeah, exactly. The consequence of uh, the fact that warfare in EVE under Fozisov is the biggest threat to the survival of EVE Online since Monocle Gate uh, is that everybody is just doing PvE. Why? We can't uproot and leave Delve to go attack people because Fozisov will punish us for daring to leave our space in any way. Right. Attacking somebody else is pointless because there will be no consequences unless we uproot and move. Let's and say that only... we want to... Oh, you go. Sorry, sorry. But I, I, see, I see this, but I also see, like, you look at, we talked about a couple weeks ago about the... Uh, uh, Operation Trophy that is going to be Providence at the uh, the end of the year here coming up. That's only going to happen if everyone that's a zero zero that wants a trophy goes. Okay, we're not going to attack each other. We're just going to go fuck Provi. Because if any of the above parties that want to go fuck Provi leave their home, their home's going to be burnt down. Hell, renters could burn it down in a few days if they really wanted to. Because well, you're not home. You can't defend it. It's well, the it's crazy. The problem here isn't really that like. If you leave, another major alliance is going to come attack you. The problem is that if you leave, a bunch of randoms that don't have to commit anything will come and burn down your space. Yeah. That's true. There, there's nothing there. One of the things that was proposed by Johnson Stroker uh, at FanFest during the NullSec Roundtable was 
to make the balance between an attacker and defender a little bit better on in Fazisov was I thought a great idea, uh, which was make a requirement for offensive sov hacking a war deck. Right, so it's an easy enough thing to do. If you have declared war in a high sex sense against an entity, then you're allowed to hack them. This means that somebody who is trying to harassment hack you is at least putting something at risk uh, in high sec, and it will cut down massively on the just random anybody can hack, but only one alliance and can defend. Neutrals. Bullshit. Right, you right. Can't it just does. Be a neutral guy who's going to. You have to put some, some skin in the thing. game, right? You right. have to put your shit at risk by declaring war. Uh, however, when CCP was uh, approached by this in public at the NullSec roundtable, they said that they didn't want to bother, essentially, what I was told, is that they didn't want to bother with having tweaks to Fazisov because they wanted to replace it with something better, hopefully destructible outposts. But the reason, uh, you know, CCP is reacting to seeing mass economic activity across the game, uh, that is a symptom, a symptom of the disease of Fazisov, a game about war. I don't want to be in charge of an alliance that is just forced to sit here and build keep stars. It's great that we have an eighth keep star, but what I would really like to do is what Goonstorm has spent most of its history doing, which is making our enemies burn. CO2, we blow up their fleets, but impasse is right there, and right now we can't torch them, even though militarily we would be able to overpower them and devastate them. GigX right. would not be able to do a thing against us, but under Fazisov, we would go there, and let's say we did it in a week, then he would simply take it all back because we're not going to be able to occupy impasse, and we don't want to, because it's shit space. We just want to blow his shit up, and we can't because Fazisov is poison. Well, it gets better, too, because CCP is so adamant about not changing Fazisov at this moment and focusing all these new things or these other nerfs, that people in the last month have shifted away from pressuring CCP to fix Fazisov to Citadels are broken, fix Citadels. Fortizar's too strong, Keepstar too strong. There's too many of them. Like, the, the shift in the last month over the vocal minority um, has been focused on fuck Citadels. Today, uh, we'll talk about this in a minute, uh, after they got stomped, FCON immediately took to the quote from Nower Sammy, fuck Fortizar's are too powerful. Like, immediately, that was his first words after getting his entire uh, alliance blown up just a moment ago. Uh, so, uh, it's 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 funny how when people realize, oh, the developers don't give a fuck anymore. What's our next, like, point of hate? And it's right now on Citadels. But I think Citadels are great. They're at a good spot. Like, you can kill them so easily if you have Mac fleets at this moment. Yeah, but, it's, but, but it's easy to say that when we have eight keep stars and, like, 94 <laughs> stars and Delve and, like, 100 plus mediums. I mean, yeah, who's going <laughs> to yeah, it's a I mean, point. the thing is, like, simple, like, this is, again, bringing back, the economy in Delve is something that was planned uh, at great length uh, by, by the finance team and by the, me. yeah, by you by and... You. I'm not sharing credit on that. Okay, you can take all the credit <laughs> that you want. So if, I had to fight you if guys. It was, if, it was, if it was purely an Aerith thing, and Aerith is like, hey, CCP, I will explain to you how this all works and show you, uh, and instead CCP is like, oh, well, obviously that's Goonswarm meta, and clearly if we just change excavator drones, the rest of the game is not managing humans on a scale that the Imperium is. We have, and this is doesn't count our active accounts, but it counts our community active on goonfleet.com because we have people cycle in and cycle out of the game. We're dealing with more than 60,000 unique human beings in the Imperium. So to manage 60,000 people when sometimes they're mad at Eve and sometimes they love Eve and they cycle in and out and we do all these other games and we do all these things, we have all these meets, the level of complexity is a shitload more than 1,200 characters in one room region when you have maybe 150 200 right, humans yeah. the economy of any other alliance in eve is so much more laughably simplistic but that also means that they are not durable they're not resilient you nerf excavator drones and you're dealing with a small not very well developed economy because it doesn't need to be that well developed in some bumfuck drone region that alliance is fucked because yes. they actually do rely on the excavator drones. Or we they, are like, hey, whatever, no big deal. We make money from all these different things, and you've never asked us how it works. But yep. the other more simplistic economies are getting rat-fucked by this idiocy. See, I don't think CCP is thinking about this. And maybe you could tell me I'm wrong here, Aerith, but I, th I think you might agree. Is that they're not planning, because I've seen some systems in Delve with 100 fucking moons. What's going to fucking happen? Like, they think, okay, we're just going to nerf the anomaly spawn time. You're going to have 100 anomalies to pick from, so to speak, with these moons spawning every two weeks. Like, if you stagger them enough, you'll never get all of them done. There'll be some 2,000-plus moons in Delve alone, maybe not including Krayus and Pure Blind. 
in that small confined area, you're not going to run out of things to mine. Are CCP really thinking that, oh, if we nerf it now, then we won't have to worry about it later? Is that, I mean, what are they thinking? No, I mean, I think you're giving them far too much credit. They're not right. planning like that right now. This is a knee-jerk reaction to economic activity they see in the report uh, for quant data. Uh, so we know roughly the four scenarios that can play out for moon mining. Um, I've given them very light feedback, uh, but we are, we're kind of keeping our cars close to the vest because we are going to rape and pillage whatever they do on moon mining. Like, there's only a few ways they can go, and they're probably going to screw it up to some degree, and that's natural. It is a large change. I'm not saying that in a disparaging way. I expect them to screw up a little, and we're going to capitalize. That doesn't mean I'm not going to help them fix it, but we fully expect they're going to make a little bit of drama, and I think they should make a little drama with the moon mining changes. Like, there's large amounts of stockpiles out there for years and years and years, so they have a lot of wiggle room and cushion. They could screw it up really badly and take months to fix it, and they'd still be fine. So, to some degree, there's a cushion that's built into the game based on what's already existing in the game. But, yeah, they're not... This is a knee-jerk. This is a side yeah. moment of one developer that had a little bit of time for balance, and he just slammed in some changes without much thought. So, so you mean and my just laid up my quant posting and pissing everybody off which did did quan even have anything to do with this or did he just like breeze by reddit because of this whole let's worship at the altar of our eve uh nonsense direction that boat was pointing out that uh, uh their pr people took uh during the casino war uh did, did do we know if quan had anything to do with this or did he just drive by and escalate things with a shitty bad post uh, I don't know how much I can reveal, but I, what, I, what I'll say is this. Um, I do believe he has a lot to do with gathering the metrics. They lean on him very heavily. Um, I don't believe his, his statement was pre-planned, and I don't think they knew about it. Um, and what I would remind the viewers, and I've said this before on another show earlier today, this is the guy that didn't know all his mining data was wrong for tons of time, didn't know the broker fees were wrong until I beat him over the face with it for like a year. Like, he doesn't even know his own stats are wrong when they're wrong. So take what he thinks with a great stuff. <laughs> yeah, Mitch, he's the economic guy who posts all the, like, data reports. He's the, like, he's the, the metrics makes, guy. Yeah, he's the metrics guy. And what's funny about this is he even makes a comment here. He says, when players could sit reliably and make 500 to 800 mil an, isk an hour per account, that's why people are unsubbing 17 accounts. Like, what the fuck? Uh, if I could make 800 million esque an hour, I would probably be playing the Let's, uh, let's talk the about cherry game. picking stats here. Right, I mean, right. that, that's, a, that's a good example of a cherry picked stat. Uh, I want to hear this either from a nominate or from, from Aerith. I mean, how is CCP choosing these amazing statistics that come out uh, that they are justifying these game changes with? What's going on? Well, I think the quant post kind of said everything. They're looking at statistics and they're picking the statistics they like and they're doing what they want to do with them. That sounds like one of Fozzie's uh, infamous focus groups where there's a whole bunch of random things said and then he picks and chooses something that one person said at one point and said, oh, well, the focus group totally said this because if he had brought it up to the CSM, they would have told him no. And that's why he made this a focus is... group so he could try to run around the CSM. I'm curious from, from Lux and, and, and Jay, because I know you both have done this. I've done this in the Knicks. Admittance, you've rounded in a Wyvern. Have any of you ever gotten a 260 million s 20 minute tick for your numbers? Can Theta uh, even do that? I don't know anyone uh, that's ever done it. Uh, the highest tick I ever personally saw was, I think it was 130, where I got a yeah. dread and everything else, and I've been on my game. Right. Maybe if I took off every single tank mod module um, and uh, made myself into a, a, a fantastic kill mill waiting to happen, it could happen if I got a time. But uh, uh, it's somewhat unreasonable to say this is the highest tick ever recorded. Let's multiply it by three and say that's a, a super radar's income. Right. That's just, I mean, I think I got 80 to 90 on stream once when I did it for the stream. And that's uh, per, per tick. That's maybe 200 mil an hour. This guy said it's three times the amount if you try even harder. But it's like, it's impossible numbers. Like they're so nerfing super Everybody who's here. getting no wonder people are so pissed, right? right? So if you're out there day in, day out, and God forbid you're not even in the Imperium, right? So you don't have the kind of resources and the access that we have in the organization to help you with this. If you're Joe Schmo, who's just gotten himself his baby's first riding supercarrier, and they're common enough that we do have, especially with skill injectors, there's lots of people who are relatively new players who have gotten supercarriers and they're riding in them, and you're schlepping along and you're getting like 100, maybe 90 million, especially if you're not in Delve, let's say you're getting between 70 million and 100 million a tick, and and then Quant comes by and says, you guys are the top 1% of the 1%, and you're making this ridiculous number that you've never even gotten close to seeing. Uh, no wonder people are rioting. 
Yeah. But, 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 but back that up. Take his argument at face just for a second see how farcical it is. The top 1% of 1%. I know how many subs CCP has. I can't disclose that. But if you even just figured subs and not even real people, which would be lower than subs, the top 1% of 1% is such a laughably small number. There's more people that's talked in the last, like, 10 minutes in our chat than that. Like, come on, dude. Like, you even not know math. Right, and uh, I, I also... Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, as someone who is probably what, top 1% of the 1%, uh, how often do you rat in your super carrier? Uh, who are you asking that to? Is that Aerith. to Aerith. me? Aerith. Oh, Aerith. Fuck, are you kidding me? <laughs> what would I rat? 1% of 1% don't rat? Are you fucking retarded? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I ratted, uh, I, I ratted uh, once on stream. With a Calder uh, carrier three, yeah, I, I did it on stream, and yeah. it was it, it was it was really a lot of work because I had to press lot of, lots of buttons and I had to log into Eve. Uh, Aerith made me very wealthy back in the day with uh, teaching us about the guidance system manipulation, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then after that, you know, we basically, you know, to to make serious money, uh, real real money, uh, at, at the the macro scale, destroy an entire economy, fix the market sort of level. Uh, like the idea, yeah, that's actually, that's a, the idea that the top 1% of the 1% of EVE are out there on a field ratting in an anom is oh, yeah. ridiculous. Preposterous. Yeah, like, uh, if I, I know the math, so I know how much the top 1% of the top 1% would be. It's like, these people have trillions. Like they're, you really think they're ratting in supers. Like, yeah, like, yeah. like even myself, I've got a hundred billion, I think liquid. And that puts me in space middle class at best. Like I'm poorer than anyone else in this channel, except for maybe a nominate who doesn't play Eve. Really. Dude, I made you like hundreds of billions. Dude, what the <laughs> I, I look, I give it away to newbies. Okay. I give a billion yeah, here, a billion there. Power. Yeah. I give away lots of money to newbies. I like newbies. Okay. Fuck you. <laughs> I think I give it away 200 billion in the last year and a half to help support the war effort in goons. Sorry, I just the way it is, man. You know, like the top. <laughs> to, to give people an example of like the top one percent of one percent. I may devote now in this day and age. I might give it twenty hours of gaming a year to make is personally. It's probably not even that, and you can easily make a trillion s with that easily. So, ratting like that is like shameful as far as I'm concerned. If you're if you're doing like you know the. Just sort of like in the American economy, the real source of wealth, this is all Thomas Piketty stuff, is that once you accumulate enough capital, capital itself accrues more value. And so once you get that really big uh, first sort of bankroll, uh, you know, baby's first hundred billion turns into baby's first half a trillion turns into baby's first trillion. Uh, and then you're just dealing at things at a scale that people have no awareness of. Uh, when I was informed of these nerfs, like I've thought that carrier fighters were a bit ridiculous, uh, but now unfortunately the validity of the, the fighter nerf is obscured by the terrible communication strategy that CCP has employed. Uh, you know, I looked at this and I'm like, okay, well, this is a buff to goon swarm. So I was not upset. I looked at this and I was like, okay, well, we might officially be making less ISK, but in practice, we're going to be making percentage-wise more ISK than our competition, right. which means that this nerf is actually a massive buff to us. All I mean, this in so. whole fucks renters. Like, it's really hitting renters hard. Like, if you rent your space, you are the one, one rent programs they do. Right. Like, you're going to be in a situation where you're crying. Your carriers are no longer able to rat and make money for you. You're no longer going to see mining making you money and the, these anomalies. Like, your renting has just gone to shit. Now, are you going to use VNIs and HRs to make your rental money of 10 bill a month? No, you're not. There's not enough renters out there, man. And all those people are smart enough to go sit in Karma Fleet or Brave Newbies, where HRs and VNIs are more than welcome because they just make us money, right? So, uh, CCP is wonderful for this. I, I say wonderful because they're helping us more than they're helping anyone else in Eve. Well, we don't, we don't, we don't want the help though. That's the thing. Is we like, don't need it. That's the even better we, we part. We want to go to war, right? Like oh, all yeah. of the stuff that's happening. Like, uh, you know, when we have people on our eve of all places looking for me to make a public statement about this, uh, you know, hell is frozen over. Uh, you know, we don't. Like I said earlier in the show, we don't want the help. We don't need the help, and it's intended to be a nerf to Goon Swarm, but it's such a cack-handed mess. What it's actually doing is just destroying our competition. Uh, because CCP has no apparent understanding of the source of our economic power. I think that's not a uh, controversial statement. I think that we have clearly demonstrated in the monthly economic reports that we continue to make ever more amounts of ISK production uh, output uh, despite these nerfs. Right. Uh, but, you know, we just want to go to war. 
Like, I would rather have us be burning CO2 than, oh, hey, we've got our eighth keep star. Yay. I mean, it's great that we've got eight keep stars and 94 Fortisars all through Delve, or 94 <laughs> systems in Delve with Fortisars. And, like, I've literally lost count it's of how much systems. of the ship we have. Right. It's 94, 94 systems because some systems have, have, like, 10 Fortisars in them. It's ridiculous. Like, this is, this is you know, we are... We like war. We like space. Speaking murder. of this war, can we, can we segue here? Uh, yeah. I don't want to change the the, the, the the thing. I just want to segue. Uh, FCOD and Tess got shit on today, and the values and and CO two uh, after the fact. But uh, there was a huge fight today. I, I say huge um, in the sense of it wasn't ISK value huge. It was huge in the numbers of people. There were fourteen hundred people. Uh, Jay was live streaming it. He did it about two seconds before I did. Uh, we started the live stream right after the booms happened. So. I don't. I, I guess Test and NC Dot and, and uh, FCON were all pretty dumb here. So FCON Warp said to shoot this Fortisar that comes out of reinforced. Um, no, no, everyone, no, no, no. It was it didn't come out reinforced. It was they were showing up. Oh yeah, the reverse fall to Rally Timer. I apologize. At all. They could have blue balled and nothing would have happened. Right. So they show up in Tempest, and I didn't want to bomb them. Right. I'm, I'm running bombers here. I didn't want to bomb them. But then I see. Uh, the guys in Initiative decloak 30 bombers, and they throw bombs at it. And they're like, hey, bomber off, let's go bomb the Tempests. We bomb them. They walk out at 50% structure, so they're done. Like, there's no point of them coming back. So that test lands on grid to help, like, get Nauer Sammy safe, who's, like, bubbled. And that's the FCON leader right now. Uh, while he's sitting there, test just balls up in Maelstrom's and a nice healthy ball with no bubbles. So Initiative bombs them. We bomb them. And what's his called? NC bombs them. And to quote Vince Draken, he told his bomber FC, bomb the Maelstroms, but his bomber FC heard that as bomb test Maelstroms, not goon Maelstroms, and kills all of Test. 91 Maelstroms evaporate. Only reason they died? The last two bombers from the Vince Draken bomber group hit. Like, my bombers put up in structure, and Vince Draken's NC not finishes them off. So those two get wiped out, and everyone else says, okay, fuck this. We got to get out of here. We got to run. CO2 tries to run. FCON try to run. They run right into PL, CO, uh, test, or PL, try, and NC dot, and we come up their ass from behind, and they just all get wiped out, and it was glorious. And Gigax died, and uh, oh. one of one of the... Uh, it's pretty how Gigax died, because uh, they're all anchored on him, and uh, Initiative Snatch Fleet dragged him off, and at that point... Uh, he told their fleet, or the CO2 fleet, to just bail, and they were very deep in bubbles. <laughs> like Gigex is uh, the number one diplomat in EVE. I mean, one of the other dramas yeah. that we would have been talking about if it wasn't for the CCP nonsense is uh, the the leaks. Uh, oh, no, we can't talk about that. this. Yeah, I got it, got it right here, boys. Yeah, we, we got right five there. minutes. So basically, like, this is just a few days ago is a leak of Gigex. Now, one of the things that uh, is, is important to know about CO2 diplomacy, because uh, I've I received some questions about this, it's like uh, is... It, it, no, is before Gigex alienated everybody in CO2, and like a lot of the old directors aren't there. Uh, back in the day, we almost never talked directly to Gigex when he was a member of the Imperium. Uh, we would deal with the Judge, we would deal with Da Vinci, uh, we would deal with Sebastian Saint Fruskin. Uh, he was uh, essentially firewalled from ever having direct contact with anybody who could hold him accountable for his bullshit. Uh, so one of the things is many of those people are no longer there. So yeah. you're getting to see direct unfiltered contact of Gigex, number one diplomat in EVE uh, with uh, everybody else. And lo and behold, he is an unstable, traitorous piece of shit. Who knew? Yeah. Well, the best part about these logs isn't even the Gigex bit because the Gigex bit's pretty funny. And, and, and the uh, TLDR of these logs, uh, here's the actual logs if you don't want to go to Reddit, is Gigex goes to test and says, look, you fucks. Why aren't you hitting goons like I am? I'm hitting goons. I'm doing all this economic damage. Look at me doing this. This this was after a. This was after uh, so, a couple of days yeah. ago, CO two and Brave refed a goon swarm for design in catch, and this was them showing up to the armor timer to ref it again. And yeah. test obviously didn't form. Test didn't form because we have a deal with test. Don't shoot these certain you know yeah. ours. So they're not going to come shoot them. And test, Gigas proceeds to call us a poor coward. But the best part out of these logs is not these logs. It's the Reddit thread accompanying these logs. And why is that? Because Sapporo goes in for damage control. This channel was a very private coordination channel, maybe 10 guys in there. Uh, to leak from there either has to be a high-level spy or it has to be someone just 
wanting to gain comedy out of this or like pause rift whoever it might even be internal test guys looking for the comedy you know but either way support goes in and do damage control he's like look you're just a coward you're releasing these chat logs because you're a coward you're doing it on a blank account because you're a coward why don't you come out and be a man and tell us who did it right tell us who you are so we can just you know face it like a man it's <laughs> hilarious to read because sapporo's a moron let's get it here first folks I think he's an idiot, and it's hilarious when he tries to come in and damage control things. Oh, I love it. It's so fun. But that's pretty much the TLDR of this. It was so good. Now, maybe, of course, uh, you know, other in in diplomats might not call him a moron, but I'm allowed to because I'm voting. Because, well, I think he is. <laughs> Aerith is shorting out due to irony overload. Uh, so. <laughs> oh, wow. That's rude. Yeah, I just. <laughs> love you, man. It, it, it's hard to. <laughs> It's hard to come up with something to say, which is really funny coming from me, because I just, it's just been, it's so, this is so <sighs> dumb. Like, it, it's just pointless and dumb. The okay. fighter nerfs might have actually been reasonable. Uh, They're warranted. They're warranted. Yeah, they, they are warranted. We've seen them delete Titans, right. but uh, what is being discussed here because of their absolutely sophomoric uh, accountability dodging uh, communication strategy. And when I say accountability dodging, I want to make that extremely clear. When you have elected and promoted a CSM as a focus group, and you'll tell any games journalist who will give you the time of day about how much you listen to the CSM, and it's so democratic, but the moment that your little fee-fees get hurt because the CSM says that your game design decisions were not exactly wise, the players don't like it, you go crying to make your own little specialist focus group that you can then cherry-pick something that somebody might oh. have said out of a course of 50 <laughs> people. That is an, a dodge of accountability. No, it's even better than that. Want to, if you want to have a CSM him and you promote it then you listen to them and then you would be able to avoid this kind of thing happening and now possibly good game design decisions that the csm probably would have told you hey these fighter changes probably are warranted let's help you message it now everything is on fire and burning right. because ccp tried to dodge accountability more than that too is it almost looks like with a lot of the things they do it's you'll have 10 people tell them it's dumb and they're just waiting for that one guy to say this is a good idea and then go, okay, this guy said it's a good idea, so we're going to run with it, right? They're looking for that yes man in the group. Uh, so they'll ignore the CSM for now. And, and they the cherry pick it. And like what, it's, what it's doing, yeah, what it's doing right now, too, is it's causing a lot of people in the vocal minority to say, why do we even need a CSM? The CCP obviously isn't listening to them. No, the player base can't talk to the CSM because the CSM, in the case of the judge, spent like a like two days saying how great the CCP is after everyone's bad at CCP. So you end up in a lot of situations like, Okay, what's the CSM here? I love the CSM because they tend to be right. And I don't CSM like... is a very powerful tool as long yeah. as you have the right people on it. I mean, we had a fireside chat with more than 900, we had 940 people there asking questions of our two elected representatives. And that's how we were able to find out because it's not an NDA thing about what CCB did if they didn't communicate with the CSM. A lack of communication is not under NDA. So <laughs> we found out about it for the first time when they just randomly did this. Uh, now our people know. Uh, the a CSM that is disconnected from the media and from the people is useless. But as we've seen since CSM 6 onward, the CSM is very powerful when it is connected with a way to get to the player base. Uh, the CSM can help CCP by showing them what the players will like or dislike or help manage communications. Uh, but it is worse for CCP when they ignore the CSM, try to hide like weak and scared people hiding in little focus groups because People might disagree with your yeah, genius so, ideas, which aren't so genius at all. We have a lot of people watching the show. We're over, uh, I think we hit 700 at one point. Uh, so the idea for those who don't know, CSM is uh, Council of uh, Stellar Management. Uh, those are the people who get elected because of they're either intelligent in certain cases, uh, they're liked, or they're understood to have the player interest in heart. So they go to the CCP and act like a middleman. They they talk to CCP, they turn around and talk to the players. The players then say, okay, this is what we have a problem with. The CSM goes, okay, this is how you should word it to help fix that problem. I mean, hell, we've got two CSMs right now live on the Meta Show, guys. Right, right, I mean, right. if you're if you're from outside of the Imperium, we'll let you borrow our CSM representatives because we actually elect <laughs> good, competent people to the CSM year after year. People who are so competent, in fact, that CCP under previous administrations has been afraid to even allow them because Sion Kumatomo, yeah, 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 of course, brought so much accountability. So yeah, right, 735. But real quick, we so have some ask questions in chat if you'd like. We're almost out of time here. Um, we got to run because it's uh, 501. Uh, quick oh, shout right. outs while you ask your questions, real quick. Uh, Puppet Massacre, six months. Thank you, sir. Uh, Red Chief, six months. 
two new Twitch Primes, uh, Rodon Wolf and Machiavelli. Uh, Lord Max, six months. Kesper North, brand new sub. Thanks, man. Uh, I love Kesper North. Uh, OBGY Kenobi. OBGY and Kenobi, sorry. Three months. Uh, Janoski Koga, uh, brand new Twitch Prime. $15 donation says uh, Space Violence, Best Violence. I missed the name on that one. I apologize. Uh, that's Torbix. Uh, Torbix Torbix says that. And then Grim Wolf. And then now we have. A uh, thing on a spring. Thank you very well. Wow, thing on a spring. 25 months, dude. Thanks very much. So, yeah, lots of new subs. Black Eagles in chat. So, yeah, it's... Oh, it's been great. I love ranting this because it's... It, 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 like, I, I want to defend CCB here. I tried, but it's just so hard with their communication. Like, if they had communicated this well, players could look at this and go, holy shit, this is a great idea. It helps you, the game. We're, we're going to run a little bit over time. I'm going right. to go ahead and say we're going to give it uh, another 10 minutes to take questions because yep, this sure. is an issue when you have so many people from outside there of the stand. Imperium who are watching. <laughs> uh, so one of the questions that I hear in chat uh, from uh, Gibberish is, what do you think the Imperium getting involved in the current Jeter riot? We can do a lot of good currently. Uh, I think that that is, as of yet, unnecessary. I think that what you need to do, because we've managed situations like this before, like I was... Uh, flown to Iceland multiple times during the original Jita riots to try to sort all that crap out with Monocle Gate. Uh, and, and what we need to do here uh, is see how CCP reacts on Monday, right? Right. Uh, if they do the right thing, if they back off, not necessarily on the nerfs, but they apologize. Because the nerfs might actually be perfectly legit. They just need to apologize for the failed communication strategy and show some respect to their customers, right? And then we can have a discussion about it. They can talk to the CSM like goddamn adults. Uh, so I think that escalation steps like that, like starting a riot, going to the media, all of these things. Keep in mind also timing. When you want to put pressure on CCP, uh, remember that E3 is really getting going on Sunday and Monday of this week, such that if you want to start a riot, having a Reddit hate mob when all the games journalists in the world are busy flying to LA and are thus off the table is blowing your wad too early. What you really want to do Exactly, is you wait where you're going to get the most effect of it, is when all the games journalists are looking for stories because they're bored, because writing copy, basically copy and paste press releases from E3 is the most boring thing imaginable. Right. Uh, so if we wanted to, to throw in on a riot, we would wait for the right moment, which would probably be Tuesday or so. And that also gives CCB an opportunity to back off. You don't want to just give them stick. You want to say, look, guys, if you'll start acting like mature adults, we're happy to act like mature adults too. And they need a chance to respond. I don't think yeah. CCP should back off from changes. They should. They, they need to. It's just nerfs, so they need to add or re, even not even add uh, increase buffs. I mean, just uh, give something, something good. good. Yeah, give us something good in return. Well, that's what that's the guidance we gave them yesterday. Was yeah. look, give us a new video because the the CSM has seen videos that the players haven't, and I was hopeful that CCP CCP would willing to share those videos that are very hopeful. They have a positive message, but. It might be too early for some of those things that may never come into the game. So I, I think CCP is wary of overpromising and not delivering later. You know, players will be even more hurt about that. But we've said, um, give us a message of hope. Show us what's coming down. Show the player base uh, what they can look forward to. So yeah, eat these nerfs, guys. It sucks, but you know, it's like if you're gonna eat shit, just like you know, chew, swallow, repeat. But look what's coming down the road. Um, and I think we'll see some statements from CCP next week. I'm very hopeful. Uh, I do believe that they're probably listening um, and are going to take appropriate action. So, well, we know that they are because their official Twitch channel is watching. The yeah, and right and the now. thing is, here's the thing about the Quaint thing. It's like I've never seen a company. Now, maybe you can correct me wrong if you've seen this before, but I've never seen a company say, "Yeah, your 17 subs are not that big a deal." When he well, that let, let, let's make a distinction here, right? right. Uh, and this is this is the danger of uh and it is a very real danger of uh making a mistake saying that quant is speaking for the company right he's not yeah, i don't think he this is, is the not. danger this is the danger of reddit this is the reason why what you're talking about earlier in the show ccp prs ccp's pr department their decision to bow before the altar of reddit is a mistake that many other companies have made and it means that you essentially lose control over your company's statements uh when you encourage your developers to speak on social media and reddit like that uh you know this 
isn't even the thing that necessarily Quant was behind. Uh, and this is a completely unmanaged situation. So uh, this is what you get for saying, hey, let's have everybody talk on Reddit. It'll be great. Reddit is the future, when in reality, it's it creates hate mobs. I've seen it a million times. Normally, they come after me and other people in Goonstorm, but this time, they're after CCP. Yeah, so, that's the crazy uh, thing here. It's even, even Reddit's, uh, I think one guy uh, linked the thing in here where it literally said, goons are going in the right direction here. Let's not get mad at goons for playing the game the way it's meant to be played. Let's go to CCP and say, what the fuck are you doing? You know, that's the interesting thing about this. It's like, they're not even wanting to hate goons. As much as Gigax tries, like the vast majority of these people are going, it's not really goons here, guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> people, are, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, it's somebody really else interesting this. watching, nor otherwise intelligent people just lose their shit over upvotes and start confusing Reddit with reality. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I, I really just think that uh, when dealing with this. We have to think about the nerfs themselves, and I'm seeing questions in chat here. Sorry, I got distracted by somebody's PME in another channel. Uh, one of the things that is important, I've seen a couple of people ask questions about, are we just screwed? Is there nothing to look forward here uh, because the soft system isn't changing? Uh, I believe that CCB has said repeatedly that they are going to be making uh, outposts turn into destructible citadels in winter. Uh, at that point, Functionally speaking, we as players will be able to ignore the soft system. So regardless of whether it is replaced or not, the moment that the winter patch comes and CCP mean, makes outposts into destructible citadels, we will be able to go to war and go to a region and burn it down. And I think it's going to be hilarious what happens to Providence. I expect that Providence is going to get turned into a uh, parking lot uh, made of glass uh, and nuked from orbit uh, pretty much immediately once this goes in. So war is on the horizon uh, because the destructible outpost system allows us to go to war irrespective of Fozisov. So there is at least some hope on the horizon. Yeah, I, I, we'll see. We'll see. Hopefully. That's the thing is like we got all summer. And that, another thing Aerith pointed out at the beginning, they're on vacation. Like they're putting out all these like big nerfs and hits. They're wanting to get the um, T3s done by June 11th or July 11th, which is damn near center of summer. They want it done by July 7th because the Alliance tournament happens as soon as summer finishes, as soon as they all get back to work in August. So, uh, what else is coming? Like that's the thing is, what's next? I mean, they've swung the nerf bat or a, a bat at everything, hoping it sticks or throw a dart as it were. What's next? Like, what are we gonna talk about next week? What fuck up is coming? Like, if Monday and Tuesday go bad for them. Next week might even be worse. Like, holy shit. Well, you know, I, I, I really don't think that there is... Like, the nerf themselves to fighters, a large yeah. part of the community acknowledges that fighters need some sort of a tweak done here. Like, I think that this is a situation where the controversy relates to something that uh, is more about all the past controversies. It's about the communication strategies. So really all they have to do uh, is apologize for the communication strategies, pledge to consult with the CSM more, uh, and go, whoops, we're really sorry, guys, we fucked up. Like, the nerfs are still a good idea. Let's have a conversation about it. Uh, I don't want... You know, I actually don't think the fighter nerf needs to be overturned. I think the the yeah. stats oh, no, that no, was using were bullshit, but, like, this is an issue of communication strategy, ultimately, I think. Yeah, I think it's better for the game. You know, especially with the coupled with the other things that are coming. I mean, we didn't even get to, to really talk about this. Uh, we have one minute left. We'll talk about it real quick. Uh, they announced pirate changes. Um, no, those sites, the tens of tens, are going to spawn less. So you're going to see less uh, nightmares and vindicator and Mac hull like blueprint dropping, and then the uh, amount of materials you need to make them are going to increase. So I mean, Aerith can maybe comment real quick. Someone quoted the uh, the material is doubling in price just on the numbers. Not even including speculation and all that. I mean, is that going to happen with this? Yeah, maybe. But the, the thing is, like, you you had made a statement earlier that we wouldn't see fleets of 100 because the price is going up. Like, no. I mean, the price overall compared. I mean, you don't see our income, but I do. It's it's non-issue for oh, any of our right now. Material pricing won't be an issue, even if it triples. Uh, but I do agree that people will start using them less because the meta is going to change with T3s. Right. Right now, it's all T3s, right. action battleships. Um, we had already made the migration to Alpha Fleet again because we love us Alpha Fleet. Um, so I, I do think you're going to see some changes, but will it double? Eh, probably. Well, Could it triple? Well, eh, maybe. Well, if you what, look what back that, at like, oh, uh, if you look back at like during the Technetium days, we had the ISK to run pirate battleship fleets. The problem wasn't the cost of them. The problem was just that there weren't enough of them in the universe yep. to fill a fleet. 
Yeah, that's what I was getting at. I didn't mean like you wouldn't see a hundred of them in, a, in an occasional fleet like once a month. I meant like a sustainable war, like what we had a year ago. You're not going to see a hundred after a hundred after a hundred after a hundred. If you have time, if you have time to stock up. The really, problem really. when we did that, we tried to pivot on a dime, which was a huge mistake. Okay. That's interesting. What that's a, a good way to look at it. That's, yeah. A wonderful mess. That's why I like this game. This is what keeps me playing. That was a mistake, by the way. I'll, I'll, I'll be 10 years. I'll be 10 years in August, and... That's the only reason I still play this game is this trade draft that happens day after day. You look old for a ten year old. But no, but, but seriously, like a, 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 there's always something new to pop up. Or, like the like today, I saw Tempest and Maelstroms as the dominant doctrine on the field. That's a bomber wet dream. You haven't seen that in years since Macario started being a thing, and because you can't bomb Macarios. And you definitely I mean, with, that, with the exception of the communication strategy and Fazisov, which, you know, CCB is pledging to eventually get rid of and replace uh, with something better, at least as early as winter, we'll be able to, like, clodge our way around it. Uh, with the exception of the communication strategy stuff, I think that the game is in an increasingly healthy place, right? Yeah, like yeah. you're saying, there's more diversity of fleets. Uh, there's more activity it's gonna uh, give options. across the game. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of please don't blow your foot off with a shotgun when you're trying to do something that's reasonable. Yeah. Don't don't kill the game before you get to the point where it's going to be enjoyable, right? Like, you're no longer going to have to do, okay, we have to have T3s at this fight or we're going to lose the fight. It's going to be, oh, we have this option and that option and this option. Do we want to bling it? Do, you know, so that options. I like options. I love it. I, I don't think yeah. anyone in the CSM has said, hey, CCP, you are making horrible gameplay calls here like i don't i haven't seen that like none of us necessarily disagree with some of these decisions it's explain your rationale explain the data and communicate if you do those yeah. things it's all good and then slow it down well all right i well, think that yeah, go. uh, that is about that uh do we have uh what's up next if anything do we have Bo show or no Bo mine show? not up next but a little bit later i think plexed comes up so he comes up in a couple hours here but uh i, I am not up next i have to actually run out my house in a few moments to uh, like run out the door to go do some things with my girlfriend who's here now. So, yep. Yeah, no. The look in your eye, like, wait, what? <laughs> he has a girlfriend. No, 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 wait, it's all good. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised that you have a, uh, a, a girlfriend. But I almost just said boyfriend, which would have been funny for me. Like. <laughs> that would have been. But uh, oh, oh, no, I, I, also, I was I was supposed to ask you. You can see the background here. What do you think of uh, the J background? We had this made by our wonderful staff right before the show. Uh, I didn't even think the you J background. It. You you mean the uh, the get out? <laughs> No, the, uh, the gay for J yeah. tag instead of Good Sword Federation. Someone thought you were in a bad movie. Oh, you would I like see this. that. Someone said you would like this. I thought oh, you would I'm, love this. So. We're all I'm gay CEO. for J. I'm, I'm really CEO of the, uh, the Alliance I2M gay. So. It's true. It's true. Yeah, it's, I think they're still working on it's getting... It's just as a line uh, sticker. They're, they're working on getting new shows because uh, <laughs> right after the Metro, there used to be like two shows for like four hours, and now it's not there right now, so... Well, I want to yeah. give people a shout out also, speaking of Jay, because he uh, and uh, Joe Barbarian, uh, we're looking for more volunteers for uh, people who are willing to stream uh, when there's breaking news and fights. So you would you don't necessarily have to have a, a strict streaming schedule of like, I do this show at this time uh, for INN. So feel free to hit us up uh, through our contact us form on the website if you're interested in being a roving breaking newsy reporter, uh, particularly in Euro time zone, which is when a lot of these big fights happen. Uh, but Jay did a great job today and we're pretty pumped about that as well as so I yeah, think you also streamed yesterday. Didn't and, you, Jay? Yeah, it was hilarious because when, when he went live, like two minutes before he went live, I was like, after he went live, I was going to press the button to go live myself because they're like, "Boat, we need you," and then it would let me work, and I was panicking that the key broke. <laughs> it was hilarious. Well, I'm going to apologize yeah. for skipping the international uh, segment. We're going to get him next week. Yeah. Sophie had to take off to go to Alliance Tournament uh, stuff after successfully onlining the eighth keep star of the Imperium within the uh, great and wonderful region of Delve. Uh, anime is cartoons. Delve is goons. We will see you all next week. Yep. See you next week. Later, everyone. You are about to receive messages that may be harmful to your mental state. Your sense of reality will be questioned. Your view on things will be altered. You are now part of the meta. The meta controls everything. The meta determines what will and will not happen. You are watching the meta show.